what's up you guys this is jay young go to back with another video and in this video today i wanted to discuss a different topic more of a hot take topic you know it's a really an opinion of course with mine but i was watching the other day gilbert arenas came on jj reddick's podcast and they were talking about the nba coaching system and how coaches get fired and all and it was just really interesting because a lot of it to me personally is valid you know because i feel like for example, Monty Williams really didn't deserve to be fired. I felt like this last this playoff run because, well, not only did he already help build a foundation in Phoenix, but he built a culture as well. Like the players bought into what he was doing and everything. I mean, even look at looking at the Celtics last year. Even though you know they have a good now coach on their team, but Emilio Doka, of course, we all know the allegations that happened with him, which is obviously bad. So he asked, he basically asked and got fired, but he still helped build a culture for the Boston Celtics and you know they went on that big run to the NBA Finals and they will probably maybe most likely make history coming back down from 3-0 which comes in part of great coaching now to make that run but let's still not take into the, the fact that Ime Udoka still helped change that culture for the Celtics and what they used to play like in the past and looking at teams that have had these coaches man obviously it's like bad for coaches of the years now to even be coach of the year because they're getting fired i mean we all know nick nurse just recently he as well got fired from the toronto raptors and he helped that team win an nba championship mike budenhoser got fired after helping the bucks win an nba championship frank vogel from the lakers got fired after helping them win an nba championship it's like no coach is safe when things go wrong the scapegoat is always going to be the coach and i feel like personally they're not looking at it as well from a longevity standpoint now look some coaches can make a difference it has happened on nba teams before where new coaching comes in i mean the minnesota timberwolves for example with their new head coach he's really come in and really helped build a new foundation for the timberwolves and making them a better team you know because you know teams like that man they've had head coaches gone through left and right even teams like the sacramento kings they've had head coaches come through left and right some guys still didn't really deserve to be fired but hey they still did and a lot of times they hire coaches as well from teams that you know have won nba championships and they kind of expect that same mentality coming in and it doesn't really work out but you got to look at it from a longevity standpoint man and the two primary examples of that to me personally is well three actually i would say look at the denver nuggets you know they've still been a pretty good team over these last few years despite the injuries but they've still remained it with mike malone as their head coach even after getting eliminated in the second round many times in the playoffs you know they finally now made it past that that bump and made it into the nba finals because they they stayed loyal as well with their coach they knew their identity they knew the team that they were going to compete be and what they built around them and look at them now they're in the nba finals it's a great story really great story and, and great for him as a head coach and when you look at teams like of course the miami heat and the san antonio spurs which they both had the same coach for decades well san antonio even longer with greg popovich but even with eric spolcher you know the way he even started off with the miami heat you know working his way up into becoming that head coach and helping build that culture that they have now for the miami heat and that team you know it really speaks testaments on why teams like that succeed you know why the miami heat is succeed because they have great coaching they have had a coach there that has been greg greg popovich has as well too both of these coaches have been through thick and thin with their teams when their teams were good they were still the head coach and when their teams were bad they have still remained the head coach of that team you know it's so easy to just automatically just point the fingers at the coach and realize sometimes it's just the general manager's fault like coaches can only work with what you give them at the end of the day i mean they they don't have any control over what you give them to work with and when you look at some of the situations that these coaches are put in you know it's not always going to meant to work the frame Fogo was fired from the Lakers at that time he didn't it's not like he had a whole team to really fully work with roster you know after they acquired Westbrook and all that stuff that was not a good team on paper just it just wasn't a good team I and mean, you can't expect him the guy literally had one of the best defensive teams in the NBA when they won the NBA championship they weren't the greatest offensive team but they still were a solid team and they won the NBA championship at the end of the day with him with the right roster around him that's really the difference in all this man it's what you give those coaches the pieces around them when nick nurse and the and the toronto raptors won that championship yeah it's primarily because they had a superstar 
and they had Kawhi Leonard. They had him as their guy, and he was playing out of his mind that year. But he also had solid pieces surrounding him that helped contribute them to winning that NBA championship. And that's the thing. When you have solid pieces around your team and you actually have a great player, it makes things easier. That's the thing. Like, coaches, what really helped them is if they have a superstar level player on their team or not. And if they do, it makes your life way easier. It makes contending and competing for an NBA championship much easier than not being in that position of having that one star quality player on your team and in comparison of rebuilding i feel like when you're in that rebuilding phase and you develop these guys and help them become better players it makes things even better and it builds even more chemistry over time with you and the coach on the team as well i mean look at the warriors for crying out loud i mean even though steve kerr was blessed with steph curry clay tops and draymond green it's not like when they were bad, of course, they fired him. We all know it still because players were hurt and all that, but they didn't fully point the blame on him and fired him in the process like how many other teams would do, even after being still a championship caliber team. I mean, the Lakers have not remained a consistent when it comes to having head coaches. Many teams around the NBA have not remained consistent with these head coaches on the team. Going back to the Toronto Raptors, I mean, I believe the year that they fired Dwayne Casey and they brought in Kawhi Leonard, Nick Nurse as the head coach. Dwayne Casey won coach of the year for crying out loud that year and was fired, of course. You know, and and it's not really his fault because, well, DeMar DeRozan, Kyle Lowry, all those guys during that time, you know, they were good, but they just couldn't give over, get over LeBron James. It was just the reality. They were not good enough to do so, and they just didn't have the team to do so. Yeah, I look, I get it. Coaching can make a big difference because coaches, of course, they control rotations. They control the plays you run. They control many things that you do offensively and defensively as a team. They build the system. And a lot of that plays a huge role in guys being successful or not. And they come in and create a foundation, you know, for your team you know, that you build on. And, you know, luckily teams like the, like I said before, the Warriors, the Spurs, the Nuggets, teams now look at the nuggets for example as i said before in the nba finals they are showing you what longevity means by sticking with that head coach through even the good seasons and the bad seasons and now look where the results get you in the end still it may take a while but look at them now look at the miami heat man you know the miami heat weren't even not supposed to make it this far this year they were not supposed to be possibly going to the nba finals still and even though you know they did blow a 3-0 league right now i hate to say it it's still they were not supposed to be here, but they are. And that has to come into play as well as head coaching. Obviously, it's the players, but it's the mindset that your coach gives you to go out there and win. It's really that re simple. So, yeah, man, that's all I really wanted to discuss today in this video. What do you guys think, really? This video is really as well for the comments that you're really understanding. You know, should coaches be fired so soon? You know, because it's not really their fault. It's the general manager's fault. It's the Lakers' fault for when they built the team that they did in the past. I mean, I believe that there's going to be coaches, I mean, we all know, who already got fired this season, even though their teams, some of them were not really as good as they thought they were. I mean, it's really a lot of things that you can really say, but let me know down in the comment section below what do you guys think. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more basketball content each and every single week. Have a great day. Peace.